God spoke through Paul. Paul wrote to the church at Rome, Romans chapter 2, I'm going to read verses 28 and 29. He said, For he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, nor is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is that which is of the heart, by the spirit, not by the letter. And his praise is not from men, but from God. So, this is not just Paul in the New Testament. Even in the Old Testament, it said, circumcise the foreskin of your heart, right? And Jesus said to the brethren at the church of Philadelphia, this is from Revelation chapter 3, this is a quote, who kept his word and have not denied his name. Behold, I will cause those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews, but are not, and lie. I will make them come and bow down at your feet and make them know that I have loved you. Revelation 3, 9. Not all who call themselves Christians are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ and are led by the Holy Spirit to live by his teachings and keep his commandments. Well, last week we spoke, because it's here in Amos, about the remnant. Right? We said, you know what? Speaking of his people, he says a thousand will go out, but 100, only a hundred will return. He said a hundred will go out, and only ten will return. That's a remnant. Yes. Remember Jesus talked about in the, the Sermon on the Mount about the many and the few? Mm -hmm. You know, the, the path that leads to destruction is, is broad and easy, and many are those who will choose that. Mm -hmm. But the path that leads to light, that righteous path, is, is straight and narrow, and few are those who will find it. Mm -hmm. The many and the few. Whenever it's the many and the few, well, you want to know something? It's the many who are choosing the wrong way. Have you not heard the parable that Jesus spoke to his disciples about the wheat and the tares? Now talk about church growth. Uh, wow. Overnight, that person's field multiplied. Multiplied in number and size. Right? Listen carefully, pastors, and those of you who desire the large churches. If you desire a big church, that's your goal. You have a partner who is working tirelessly with you. His name is Satan. That's right. Because he desires that your church, your congregation, the size of your congregation gets bigger. Think of this. Jesus answered and said to them, this is in Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 and 5, talking about the last days. Jesus answered and said to his disciples, to them, See to it that no one misleads you, for many will come in my name saying, I am anointed, and will mislead many. Now, your Bible may very well say, say that I am the Christ. First of all, the word the is not there. And the word Christ, this is the, this is the word Christos in Greek that means anointed. You know, it's easy to say, well, if somebody shows up and says, I'm Jesus, Oh, I'll recognize that. But what about when somebody calls up, shows up, and says, "I'm anointed. I'm God. I, you know, God has anointed me." You better still test their teaching. If they're telling you that they're anointed with their teaching or their prophecy or their their ministry, you all the more you should be testing them, checking them out. Jesus also that was, that was Matthew. That was Matthew twenty-four. Right. This is where Jesus the apostles. Came to him and said, Tell us what were the signs of your coming in the end of the age. But in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, Jesus said, Beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Why do you think they're dressed like sheep? So they won't be noticed among the flock. They're coming into the flock. They're not standing outside throwing slings and arrows, they're getting inside. And if you don't believe that, think about what the Apostle Peter wrote in, in his second letter, 2 Peter 2, 1. But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you, 
who will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. Satan wants to fill up your congregations with false sons to destroy God's work. That's not going to work. Because you know what? Satan doesn't have, isn't going to overcome God. But the, the problem is, if you are a shepherd of a flock, you better be on guard for them. You better shepherd them. The Lord spoke to his people Israel and said that he did not set his love on you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any of the peoples, for you were the fewest of all peoples. Through the apostle Paul, the Lord said, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong.